How are you doing? It's uh, Jago Think. Um, over the last, this is really off piece, really, by the way. Um, over the last couple of weeks, um, I've been uh, getting more and more involved with um, Miranda Kesh and the Kesh Foundation. Now, I've been following his work for probably about two years now, ever since he popped up online claiming that if you know, uh, if you found this by searching and you found this video, then you'll know what he's known for. Um, if not, you know, you guys should go and have a look and do some research. And um, anyway, I was looking for like sort of free energy devices, zero point energy, sort of perpetual motion, over unity, whatever you want to call them. And, you know, I believe it's out there, but not by, I believe it's out there, but it cannot be achieved by conventional mechanical means, right? Because there's too much, too much wasted energy, whether it be noise, heat, uh, drag, gravity, or whatever. Um, you're never going to be able to, at a mechanical level, put in less energy than you take out. Um, and for it to be able to self-sustain itself and then keep running. And people claim to have done it, and they may have, or they may not have done. They may have. There's some machines that run, but then they peter out. Anyway, um, it's all well and good. Now, the Cash Foundation comes along, and he claims to be able to have technology that can um, a not only create um, uh, zero gravity or um, sort of uh, sort of anti gravitics type devices, um, but also to um, have a power unit that can deliver free, um, long-lasting power to a house, right? Uh, drawing in the energy from the universe, the zero point. So I was like, okay, let's look, look. So I'm watching some of his videos, and if you're watching this, then you've probably seen quite a few of his videos, and I have, I've probably seen all of them. And then if you are following him, you'll know that from the 16th of October 2015, it kind of got a bit more exciting um, with regards to the, the deadline to the 26th of October, and then the blueprint teachings thereafter. And we're still in it, and I haven't seen one since last week, so, um, but I have been avidly watching everybody else building these things. Uh, the Magrav units um, online, and um, and to be honest, I'm running out of things to find on, running out, I'm running out of things to watch. Um, so I thought, sorry, I'll make my own video about it. And just to give you a layman's term, a layman's sort of idea of uh, what it is, um, and you've got to try and put aside any of your beliefs with regards to um, uh, how the current system works. Um, how we generate electricity, um, how we generate AC. Well, it's not AC really, it's RF because the sine waves are identical. Um, so really, it's they're just transmitting radio frequencies. Uh, DC, which they flatten off the, the low peak to make it sort of a, a flat line DC current. Um, so you've got to put that all to one side and just bear with the idea for a minute because no one really knows only Kesh Foundation and the knowledge seekers in the close-knit circles who have witnessed this in the labs, under laboratory critical conditions, have witnessed what's happening. Um, so the basic premise is that you create, um, this is, from what I understand, this power unit for the house is what I'm interested in, um, is a byproduct of what he's trying to do, which essentially create um, anti-gravity or a um, a vehicle um, that can create its own plasmatic um, environmental conditions around it, um, which causes it to move freely through space, um, weightless. So it's not anti-gravity, it creates its own environment and puts no gravity inside, if you know what I mean. That's what I understand, anyway, from everyone talking about it. Um, so this power unit was a byproduct of that. Um, so essentially, um, you take copper wire and you um, 
create a set of coils. Okay, if you're interested in how the coils are made, search online. There's uh, a couple of guys um, that are doing really well at documenting how they're building it um, with the blueprint. But essentially, you take a bunch of copper wires and um, specifically 1.6 mil gauge wires. Uh, you wind um, two lots of coils, one clockwise, one anti-clockwise, one representing um, gravitational fields on the one representing um, mag magnetic fields. You feed the smaller one inside the bigger one, you wrap them round, and then you repeat that smaller again with half the amount of turns on the coil, right? Then what you do is you nano-coat the, um, and they call it nano-coating, but it basically, from what I've read, and I don't know nothing about this, um, it's, it's to create a, a monoatomic structure of, um, of copper on the surface of the layer, and I'll get to why that's pretty interesting to me, um, and why this all might have a little bit of, you know, a little bit of gravitas behind it, um, that it could all be genuine. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm not a skeptic, I'm an open believer of, you know, but I'm interested to see how much, what happens. Anyway, so you create these uh, two lets of two coils, and then you create a three stack, and you wire them in, um, you wire them in, in series um, to the point where you plug in your mains, uh, neutral goes all the way past the, the, the system, your live goes in, um, it goes through a capacitor, it goes into the bottom gravitational, it goes through all the coils, all the way up, all the way around, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, through the coils, and then it comes out the top ne uh, negative magnetic uh, coil, a uh, little sort of bit on the end, right? And then that goes off, and then they join, they go into a plug, and you basically plug one end into the wall and one end into whatever you want. And the theory is that um, once you get... Uh, oh. Once you've sort of uh, put a nano coating over these things, you've got to put, you've got to coat them in GANs, which is apparently is gas in nanostate, but it, it looks a bit like copper or zinc oxide. Um, essentially, you take a zinc plate, a copper plate that you've nano coated, um, and how you do the nano coating is you, um, at the same for the wires, you spray caustic soda on them, um, or you have them in a caustic bath with caustic soda and aluminium. Um, people have been chucking other junk in there like, you know, tea leaves and flipping herbs and stuff just to, I don't know what they're doing it for, but there's a whole other side to this that I'm not going to talk about yet because that's a little bit wild. Um, it's to do with the health side of things because there's several sections to the, the Keshe Foundation. Um, so you nanocoat the plate and then you get seawater, you put it in a tub, you put the two plates in, you pour seawater in and then you short circuit you short circuit the two. Essentially, you're making a battery, uh, a crude battery, um, and you're short circuiting it. So the electrons flow from the uh, positive copper to the negative um, zinc, and the um, it's supposed to draw in carbon because that's what he wants, carbon from the atmosphere, and it creates the the byproduct of the short circuit. It creates a soup at the bottom of um, a soup of sort of a. a a slurry of a kind of a liquid at the bottom, which is meant to be um, copper uh, oxide and zinc oxide um, to do with, and, and, and carbon, um, that in a nano state, which means it is a, a free atom not attached to any other objects. It's basically sat by itself, just spinning around in its quantum, you know, bubble. Um, and it's, it's a slurry at the bottom, and basically what the guys have been doing is they've been tapping off this fluid, drying it out, creating a paste, dipping these coils in the paste, and that goes into this stack of three coils, blah, 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 right? And then in the middle of each stack, you take a bit of this GANS, this, and it looks like a green goop. Um, you dry it out a bit more, and you make a ball of it, and you put it in the center of each of the, of the coils to create a central sun, um, and you seal all the unit up, and and the, and the theory is that um, whatever object you're using at that end, it uses less, it um, draws less energy from the wall because the all the coils are sucking in energy from the zero point, and it creates a, a plasma, like a free plasma, and it and it, you know 
it generates power, right? It's all well and good, and I was skeptical up to the probably yesterday. Oh no, I wasn't skeptical. I was hopefully pessimistic. I was hopefully pessimistic, um, and I watched a YouTube video by Dan Winters, a, a guy called um, uh, Corn Doc One Four Four on YouTube. Did a, a video uh, about a conversation with Dan Winter about Mr. Cash and plasma science, and I watched that. It's half an hour. And I've posted it on my Facebook page and all the rest of it. And it really changed the way I think about what he's doing. Um, and if you follow um, the stuff that Tesla was into with regards to um, sort of if you took a copper wire and you hoiked it up 10 feet in the air um, and you took a, a multimeter and you checked one side with a positive and you got a ground earth wire and you checked it with a, you get like 1.2 volts or whatever. Um, and what Tesla was doing with his big antenna, he wasn't trying to send a signal. He was trying to harness energy from the sky. And with his big thing, he had like something like 150 ton of bloody copper up in the sky in this big antenna. He was trying to suck in energy because um, copper uh, resonates at the same frequency as the Earth between 10 and 12 hertz. Um, and it's, it, it's, you know, so this guy, Dan Winter, basically goes into the whole um, monoatomic uh, structures and how you can sort of, with an electrical charge, which would be the charge from the wall, with an electrical charge you could change a, mono a monoatomic structure that's on a something like copper wire in a coil that's got electric charge running through it. You could change the shape slightly, like very minimal, change the shape of these... Um, these charges, these atomic structures, you can change them very so slightly that would allow other energy to slip in um, to the center, to the zero point. That's where the magic happens, which then makes the coating around it, which is a copper nano monoatomic structure, it makes that a superconductor. So if you look at what Tesla is doing, in my mind, Tesla hadn't figured out monoatomic structures and cash foundation have and basically you're turning copper into a super duper conductor that's allowing you're putting a charge through it which is changing the, the atomic structure slightly it's allowing uh, zero point energy or, or energy from the soup that we're in the soup between your nose and your screen and you know between you and the cooker um, it's sucking in the energy there it's it's taking it from a plasmatic sort of that's all around us, concentrating it, pushing it into the matter state that's inside the wire, pushing it down the, the wire as electrons. Now, the, the Keshe Foundation goes on, Keshe goes on about plasmatic fields and using fields and blah, 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 blah. I'm trying to like break it down so that my little brain can quantify it all. And then this gadget it's called a maggrav system you can go on the cashfoundation.org and buy one which i'm tempted but i want to see what happens and then i might make one myself um because there are other things you can do with it like like you know make my car fly that kind of thing okay so um it has the ability to 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 create monoatomic structures on all the wiring in your house like almost like a virus and it sends it through and it goes goes out and it works its way through. I don't know how it would do it, but it would do it, okay? Uh, that's, what he the, that's what the claim is. Um, and if you do do that, in theory, your house becomes an antenna, just like Tesla putting all that tonnage of bloody copper up in the sky. Your house becomes, or your apartment becomes an antenna for uh, uh, energy from, from, from the earth, right? Um, it becomes, it already is an antenna, but you don't see it because it's just copper. It's just normal copper. There's not enough in it, and then you're not high enough in the sky. But if you create a monoatomic superconductor, or super duper conductor, um, it's going to allow in energy from the quantum, and obviously, blah, 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 and then all of a sudden, everything starts to be self-generating, and you take whatever energy you need, and it was just supply it because it's a superconductor. It just supplies it. So that's, um, you know, that's how I think it works in my head.
obviously um feel free to you know berate me in the comments below um but uh, interestingly um i haven't had the conversation with my father yet because my dad is a um worked in a nuclear power station out in south africa um he then went on to training uh, nuclear operators in this uh, nuclear simulators um so i've sent him a few little tidbit videos and it'd be interesting to see what he thinks if he's spent the time looking at it he's retired now but um it'd be interesting to see what he uh, he thinks and then uh, he could probably tell me i'm pretty stupid and uh, yeah but uh we'll see so um i'll put a few links in the description below especially for that um dan winters uh, interview um and the Keshe Foundation website. And um, there's a couple of other guys on uh, YouTube um, that are, uh, Roll, Bloom, Roll Boom is another good one. Um, he's very um, sort of uh, avid uh, document. He's documenting his style. He, unfortunately tonight he just realized that he's done all his coils back to front because the instructions on the blueprint on the Keshe Foundation website weren't clear enough. So, you know, what can you do? Um, but he's going to try it anyway and keep going. So, yeah, interesting times. And, um, you know, I'm going to keep... Uh, I'll keep updating on this. Um, there's very little content out there apart from uh, Kesh himself stood in front of a whiteboard um, sort of talking at you. Um, it's, very, it's kind of difficult to understand, but, you know, I've come to love him. He's like, a, he's like an Iranian hoagie bear. Um, with a tie on, it's quite cute. Anyway, right, be safe and um, yeah, keep your fingers out the plug. Bye.